Yeah, could you uh, tell me who you are and what your group yeah, is? Yeah, my name is Paul Connery. Uh, as if you don't know, Mark is the whole number. Uh, and we're up today uh, supporting Toller and the Ashbourne uh, uh, Volunteers. Sure. Um, we're with the Dublin Brigade Irish Volunteers and the Collins 22 Society. Mm -hmm. uh, Ronnie's a, a member, Jim and, and uh, Terry. Mm -hmm. So we we were, only, we were only told about we could have about five or maybe six tables, so we only brought a third of what we normally put on for the display. Um, starting with the table there, we've uh, a 1913 Lewis machine gun. Uh, again, very popular in the, uh, when the force came out. Yeah. Um, on, on, if you have a good gun crew on it, you're looking at about 400 rounds a minute. Wow. Uh, it has a pan magazine on it with 47 uh, rounds. And um, as I said, it was, uh, it was uh, either you could use it lying down, you could use it standing up behind the wall, you could even use it by, by the hand. Hmm. And it's air cooled um, <laughs> with that. So it's, it's only a replica. If I had the real one, I'd probably be sitting on the beach drinking pina coladas. <laughs> They're going that, very expensive. But that now. was used in like. Oh, it was used in 1916, yeah. 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 And the big thing at Mount Street Bridge was the, the British Army left their Lewis, uh, their heavy machine guns and Lewis machine guns behind. That's right. Which yeah. I think. If they had a have them, it would have been. Uh, they wouldn't have been. Uh, or they probably they wouldn't have losing that many men, you know. Yeah. Um, again, just the cases. Sure. Uh, the cases is a display of uh, cap badges. Okay. Um, and county cap badges. So you've about between six and seven county cap badges. Uh, we've Tipperary, Limerick, Waterford, uh, Mayo, uh, Cork, Dublin, and. Um, uh, the Dublin Brigade one then as well. So the other things in the case then would be the armband from 1935. Uh, um, it came out after the 19th anniversary of uh, the 1916 Rising. Okay. And then they stopped wearing them or using them when the medals came out in 1940. So again, uh, thing. probably the rarest thing in the, in the case from 1916 is the little de uh, dependent pin. Wow. And that's a paper one. A lot of them are made into metal yeah. uh, and steel. Yeah. Uh, but this is a paper one. It was given to me by a lady whose um, grandmother was in the coming on, and it was an honour to have it. So. And so there is one's family's volunteers, prisoners of war. Yeah, prisoners of war. Yeah, um, it was it was sold to collect money for them. Okay. Again, as I said to you, some uh, Irish citizen army, uh, Irish volunteer uh, harps, and. Uh, couple of little uh, memorabilia from the Royal Irish Gustavery here. Again, that, that was, this was being thrown out in a skip. Jeez. And I managed to get a little British standard there from the Victorian family. Again, being thrown out in a, in a skip and I managed to pick it up. Uh, next one there now, there's um, 1966 10 shilling coins, the Patrick Pierce uh, oh, yeah. Memorial coin. Um, wow. Again, it has the, the value of 10 shillings, whether it has it today, I don't know. Uh, some officer rank comic bars and um, Sinn Féin, uh, victory, uh, the Victory of Sinn Féin book. Again, a good friend of mine, Michael Joyce, gave me this. It was belonging to his father, uh, and, and it was uh, sorry, his grandfather, and it was getting uh, uh, put out the tender. So I managed to get it. And this is a great uh, piece of history. It's a signing in book from the Court Courts, 1920 to 19, 1919 to 1920. Yeah. Uh, and again, it was being thrown out in a skip. So That's anybody, incredible. anybody entering the four courts in that year would have happened to sign that book. How do you get it then? Like, how do you Again, people just ring you, ring you up, and have, we have something for you, yeah, and what yeah. have you. Uh, with that, then was the bayonet that's okay. in the case here, yeah. and uh, the Luger. Uh, the holster is off a Russian uh, Desiree uh, revolver. Okay. Again, being thrown out, and nobody knew what it was, and uh, I managed to, the, the, to get it off. And the Glengarry cap badge no, then, uh, and uh, the very, again, oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the double the game yeah. uh, cap badge on it. Yeah, uh, next one down is um, a 38 Webley revolver yeah. and a 45 Webley revolver. Wow. And the ammunition then, the, the difference in size of ammunition for them, big uh, uh, lead heads on them. And again, the, the, the famous Peter the Painter. Wow. Again, I had uh, numerous name, names. Uh, the, yeah. When the Chinese mass produced them, they had the boom box or the, right. the broom handle. Yeah. Again, very popular weapon and a, and a very successful weapon. Um, two different types of grenades. One is a Mills grenade and the other one is a pineapple grenade, hence the shape. Sure. And the, the, the Mills one had a nickname here in Ireland of Bulls Balls uh, for the shape. But uh, I yet, yet to come across a bull with balls like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> again, at Warrior Quarters from 1916, the British Army started okay. Warrior Quarters. Yeah. Again, this was in, in, in my family home, which I never knew. Right, and, uh, okay. We were only cleared out the house the other day, and there was uh, I picked her up. So, wow. it was grand. Um, again, just a couple of boards then, yeah. train the, the leaders of 1916, or the executed mm -hmm. uh, men of 1916, and then some handguns from the period. Um, Walter P.P., the, the, the very popular uh, M11, okay. uh, Code 11, and the, 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 the German Luger. Okay. And then the bayonets is a 303 bayonet and a K98 bayonet. And oh, there's okay. some cleaning, cleaning equipment from the 303 rifle there as well, okay. oil bottle. Look. Thompson submachine gun. Uh, Thompson came in uh, started going into liquidation at the end of World War One because mm -hmm. nobody was buying them. Yeah. Uh, and again, you had the gangsters starting to buy them then. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we've the uh, Hardy Bowling going to uh, America mm. with, with funding to buy. Um, uh, I think the purchase was about between 530 and 580, mm. and a lot of them got captured by the U.S. customs. Okay. So they managed to probably get about 130 into the country. Okay. But a massive rate for the magazine on that is a 50 round magazine. They tried it in the casino, didn't they? They did. Yeah, they test fired that in the uh, Marino. Marino Casino. Tom Barry, Michael Collins. Uh, and uh, Richard McCarthy, among others, were there for, for yeah, yeah. the testing of that. But it changed the whole uh, perspective of the, the War of Independence. Yeah. Start using them the end of, of 1921, and then yeah. into, the, in, into a sad time, the, 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 the Civil War. Yeah. Um, German K98, uh, Mauser rifle, and this is the more up to date version of it uh, from the World War I. Um, the Mausers that come in in 1914 uh, uh, with the Ashgard. Looked a little similar to this one here, which is the Mossamagant. I see, yeah. The Mossamagant would have come in on the Ashgar. These were captured Ru Ru Russian rifles that were mm. being brought into the country. Okay. So, again, this is 1891, this is 1916, and this is 1924 okay. version of the Mauser. Again, very popular weapon. Uh, but again, the Lee Enfield outshot these. That's right, yeah. Outfired yeah. them because they were a 10 round magazine and a much rate, a rapid rate of fire on them. So, for those who don't know, the British would have been more with the Lee Enfields and they would have been with, more with the Lee Enfield, yeah. Okay. You know, um, and then just moving on with some of the women of, of 1916 oh, right. Kathleen, yeah. uh, Rosie Hackett, yeah. Countess Markovich, the O'Rahilly family, uh, Elizabeth Farrell, yeah. uh, we have Kathleen Clark, and we have. Uh, 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 Oh, Hannah, she's getting the mineral. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's so, very good. That's just moving on to different items of, of, of the period of 1916. Yeah. Um, these are uh, plates that soldiers would have hammering onto their box, onto their kit box. Yeah. Okay. And when they were gone on, on, on duty, they just turned them around. Okay. So, but there was thousands upon thousands of these left after World War One because lads weren't coming back for yeah. kit boxes. Oh, yeah. So it's just a collection that Ronnie has, and and. and wow. uh, you, uh, they're made of brass and, and, and that, but they're very. Um, when you when you're holding them, you know they're belonging to someone. Absolutely. You know, a um, little bit of, a little bit from the yard, uh, no box of ammunition from the yard. Yeah, some rounds that were taken up from the yard. It's still in the little uh, uh, case that they came in. Wow. And Roger Casement in a photograph of Roger Casement. Yeah. These are all the medals from. 1938 uh, to 46. These are all the emergency medals. Yeah. There was 11 of them done for okay. different people. Okay. Uh, the most rare one would be the 26th Battalion. These were all men from the Civil War or the War of Independence in 1916. Were all brought again under one battalion. And again, this is the, 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 the that's probably the most rare one of it. You had ones for chaplains, nurses, engineers. So they got a different medal. Yeah. So anybody with the service bar on it would have been the 26th Battalion and it would say 26th Battalion on the back of it. That's so incredible. they're the emergency, 11 different emergency medals. That's okay. incredible. Some cap badges from uh, the Connacht Rangers. Yeah. Um, again, we had an awful lot of the Irish uh, people um, uh, serving in, in units in the British Army and that. Um, the Orden Crosses are yeah. uh, very poignant and I only learned this out a while back. There was 175,000 Orden Crosses presented to Jewish men in the German army in World War One. Wow. And come That's 19, a very come 1946, yeah. Yeah, they I were know. being put yeah. into ghettos and, yeah. and uh, classes, Class second yeah. classes. Yeah. But 175,000 Orden Crosses were given to Jewish uh, men in World War One. That's incredible. It is, it, it is, it's, it's very poignant, you know. Um, 
Again, another selection of, of trench art here from World War One. Men sitting in the trenches making things. Yeah. Again, probably months went by with just pure boredom. Yeah, yeah. And they started making pens and watches and little crosses and that. Uh, we have a handsaw from the British Army here. Uh, it could be either a two-man or a one-man oh, handsaw. Yeah, yeah. You know, little things that people ask us, what's this? It's a button stick. What do you mean? It's a button stick, steel button stick. So what you do is you get the button yeah. and you put it through to polish it. Oh, without right. the brass all going yeah. on the thing. So you'd had different sizes for different buttons. Very clever. So little little button stick there. Again, a, a, a cutthroat razor. And the clay pipes. Okay. Clay pipes were, were, were a very significant thing that you'd use them till they either broke or they went down where you couldn't use them anymore and you just threw them away. And that's why you have lots of them. And if, if you remember ta talking about the, the river in uh, Van Gogh prison. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There was a, oh, lot of, right. a lot of clay pipes found in the river that lads would have used and making and that, you know. Again, bunches of keys from serving different prisons. Um, the size of the bullets, yeah, though, yeah. as well, it's incredible. Well, again, this is an oil, this is an oil uh, 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 tank for the 303 rifle. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, it would have fit into the butt of the rifle along with your pull through and things like that. The one there, the point five, which would have been out in, 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 in 1916 as well. Massive, uh, massive round, you know, and still being used for sniper rifles today. Uh, different goggles for motorbikes and musket balls from the Somme. Would have been picked up on the Somme. Uh, the shells that were being fired in 1916, again, the 18 the, the pounder would be what well, he would have fired in, in, in Dublin and again in, in, in the Civil War. Sure. Um, the shell would have held in about 375 lead balls and when that exploded uh, the the 18 pounder had a range of about eight and a half to nine kilometers yeah so when you fire the shell this is a timer that sits on top of the shell okay so you'd set that for 15 seconds after the, the shell left so 15 seconds later that will be calculated over troop heads or buildings where people are occupied so anything in a, in a, in a 25 or 30 yard radius would be completely annihilated with this coming down plus the shrapnel from the shell you know uh, some lovely medals from world war one the, the we have the the selection of medals here with the 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 the, the, the cross uh the, sorry the star yeah. should i say my apologies uh, the mon star Oh yeah. Uh, 1914, 1915, so anybody with the expeditionary force going out would have been getting this medal. Mm. And then the two World War I medals and that. And uh, this is a medal from the Boer War. Okay. Again. Um, again, the Royal Dublin Fusiliers, the yeah. selection of the cap badges and, and shoulder boards. Oh yeah. So, uh, again, uh, significant with, with a lot of Dublin men and Munster men with, with the thing. Um, yeah. And then some uh, more medals sent to Irish men that were, were in the Royal Dublin Fusiliers. Again, these are our own medals of 1916. Uh, well, sorry, should I say the War of Independence? Yeah. Uh, this is the War of Independence sure. um, uh, bar, uh, with Bar, and then the uh, Survivors Medal, 1971 Survivors Medal, and we have miniatures here of it. And then we have the Fina Erden Medal. Um, again, come out in 1940, 41. People started being issued and, and applying for the medals as yeah. it's up to that they wore the armband that we just uh, visited. So a selection then of uh, bayonets from uh, right through from the French Revolution all the way through to, to, to modern day. We have uh, we've pike bayonets, we used to call them pig pokes or pig stickers and yeah. you know 303 bayonets, uh, the French Lavelle bayonets, oh, yeah. um, uh, Swedish Mauser. Uh, we have here, and we have more up to date. Like these are the bayonets became a regular size. I think uh, under the Geneva Convention now, I think it has to be nine inches. Oh right, okay. Uh, yeah. Again, you know, because you can imagine that going through two men of, of the Absolutely, year. Absolutely. You know, yeah. we, we, we weren't big men back then. You know, yeah. so that's a lovely selection of bayonets that Ronnie has. Uh, again, some lovely selection of postcards from 1916, the leaders of 1916. Very well done. I think there's a lad in Galway doing them. Um, again, some coins that Ronnie has collected over the years, uh, commemorating coins and, and medals. Yeah. And then a selection of uh, medals that would have come out into the, into the army. This is our service medal, our 10-year service medal. Oh, wow, yeah. And this is a, the, the Good Conduct medal, uh, anybody that would have a good conduct. And this is the FCA 21 service medal. Again, a selection of buttons, uh, whistles that would have been used in, on the time, and our cap badges that we, we wear today. Um, this is taken out for the, the, the 50th anniversary. Sure. Uh, Boland's Mill uh, would be significant with this, but it is the Volunteers yes, 1914 uh, logo. Okay. So it was just re redone then in 1966. Um, 
So that's it's, the logo the one here. Just yeah, saying. it's a, it's a small sword with, with the, the Celtic um, symbol on it. Oh yeah, you don't see uh, as much though. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I actually I think I have one on, on my uniform. If memory serves me right, I do. You do. A little small one there. Oh, very good. So. Okay. Uh, Again, um, not many of them left. Yeah. Again, if uh, Fianna Aaron, uh, uh, Bell Buckle, our Irish volunteer Bell Buckle, and, and uh, modern day army uh, Bell Buckle. And again, lovely little uh, glass case with the FF on them, silver yeah. glass case with the FF on them, very uh, uh, original. Um, Irish regiments in the British army, again, we have the death penny here that would have been given uh, to a soldier after he died, it would have been sent to the family. You know, so when they wouldn't have a body, I've heard of two or three families where they've opened the grave or put the death penny in because they didn't have a body, but the, the penny going into the grave will symbolise them. When the I mean, death penny is sent, do the, do the family already know? Or is the, the death penny... The, 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 yeah, I, they would get a, a telegram first okay. uh, saying that, that, that they're either lost yeah. actually, or killed in action and then the, the, the death penny will follow. Their names are normally engraved on it. Uh, again, a, a very poignant uh, uh, thing that, that for the family to have. Uh, we have wound badges in here as well. Uh, if you were wounded in World War One, you get a wound badge uh, to, to, to say that you were uh, out after being wounded. And again, some lovely British regiment uh, that served in Ireland. Um, you know, I think the one that would stand out in there is uh, the Sherwood Foresters. Oh, yeah. uh, again, um, significant with the, the executions in 1916 Absolutely. and the loss yeah, that they had in Mount Street Bridge. Again, 18 pounder shell. Um, this is the timer on it. Inside and there, you, uh, when this was w was fired, it would send a, a, a spark when it reached it, 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 the time on the on the shell that the soldier puts it on it. And inside, then you, down the end, you have a, a large explosion, which blows the shell out. Oh, I so see. these would so even go into yeah, we, they, these would go into ground, yeah. into soft ground, and explode then when troops are marching over them, or yeah. they be used to explode uh, in air. Okay. We call that the artillery and air burst. Okay. So it just share, shares the troops below with, with shrapnel. Okay. You know. Um, again, lovely collection of badges that have come out through 1916 oh, uh, right. and, and over the years that Ronnie has collected as well. Some nice little uh, individual badges. Um, again, a cannonball. If you just see the weight of it, uh, you know, would would have been used prior yeah. to the shells being used. Okay. Um, again, very heavy. And just on the, on the trench art. Yeah. If you just see the lovely design, if you can pick up the design oh, again, on that, yeah, yeah. it's very hard to see. No, but it's, it is it's very absolutely detailed. beautiful, yeah. Um, oh, wow. And this would be just made by, by soldiers in, in, in the trenches. And I think that's Killing a, time. Yeah, kind of thing, yeah, yeah, I think it's the Dublin Castle that's on that there. Oh, so it is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks like it already. Right. So, you know. Uh, this is incredible. You know, sitting down in, in the tank. Uh, Tommy Helmet. Yeah. Um, 19, before 1916. Yeah. Sorry. You're right. Before 1916, um, the British Army had uh, trench caps yeah. or soft caps, yeah. and the head wounds from not only just shrapnel and bullets coming in, but rocks and bits of bones and, and bits, of, bits of everything being blown in from no man's land on the artillery barrages. When they, when they introduced the helmet, the Tommy helmet in 1916, it reduced head wounds in the British Army by 75%. You know, you know, they were never designed to stop a bullet. No, but still, but, uh, still, uh, you know, uh, sometimes if the bullet hits it right, it'll probably ricochet. But yeah. nine times out of ten, it'll go through that steel. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, 303, the Enfield 303 of the day, uh, personal 22 rifle, and the same, an older version of a 22 rifle. What's a 22 rifle. There's a little 22 rifle from 1916, yeah. And. Um, Again, a couple of selections, photographs of auxiliary and black and tans of 1920 oh, to yeah. 21. That's Robert Ullman, I think, at the bottom. It is, yeah, yeah. which is, uh, he's an Irish volunteer. That's right, yeah. And escaped the black and tans on many occasions, and yeah. I believe one of them was in a flour mill. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Everything was was hid in the bottom of the flour, <laughs> and he just threw an apron on him and covered himself in flour to get away. Jesus, yeah, incredible. it's a very funny, uh, funny story, you know. Beautiful uh, sword um, from the Irish Army. Again, we have a, um, the beautiful leather scabbard. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. And then we have the FF and, and beautiful Celtic uh, oh, designs going down the blade. blade. Yeah. So, you know, this is uh, these are being sold now for around 900 to 1,000 euro. Right, okay. But um, they're lovely to have. They're a lovely yeah. sentimental thing to have. Uh, again, the sword frog that goes onto the belt yeah. um, for that. And then your sword toggle then does a decoration piece on it. So that's the uh, Nordic Army sword from the day. Um, the other things then we have is our, our, our binoculars. 
a water bottle again they're coming in lads would have uh, probably a pint of water for, and god knows when they get more water mm. um, so again water was very uh, f- very necessary to have you know um, lovely little leather gaiters short leather gaiters uh, more so coming into World War 2 rather than, sure. than thing. we have the putties and, and the high gaiters yeah. from World War 1 um, and then just moving on Ronnie has a beautiful uh, selection of uh, handguns uh, we have the beautiful Webley revolver here um, we have the, the Webley uh, and Scott here again uh, a smaller version of the of the 38 Webley would have been called the Bulldog and a lot of gentlemen would ha- have them in their pocket yeah you know yeah. easy to hide and, and easy to conceal again our lovely seed now is our 96 yeah um, again as I said with the, with the, the, the stock uh, and the stock actually becomes the holster for it as well so it's an gotcha. amazing piece of uh, 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 invention there sure. and then just the different rounds we have 45 rounds here which went for the, the, the 0.45 Webley and oh, then yeah. again for our um, the Thompson submachine gun then when it came in and then the 9mm and our 2-2 rounds here so yeah but they, all, they still do damage they, yeah, st- they still yeah, do a lot yeah, of absolutely. damage in that, you know? that's an incredible so, piece of work how long did it take to amass all this or uh, labour of well, love or labour of love I mean Ronnie's been collecting a long time yeah. I've been collecting probably about 30 maybe yeah. 35 years and Ronnie's been collecting a little bit longer. Uh, and again, it's just with the generosity of, of, of people who um, have things and don't know about them, mm-hmm. and they'll drop them down to you. But we'll always say, look, it remains in the family. If you ever want the back, it's there, but we'll display it while we, we, we we're putting up our display and that, you know. So we're here today and tomorrow, a uh, bit of a reenactment tomorrow, so we'll probably- I'll be there. We, yeah, well, look out, there's a few people I want to get a bit of a bit of, uh, thing back on them now, you know? Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know. And if you want to contact well, you at the Facebook pages? The Facebook page is, uh, is uh, Dublin-Brigade-Irish-Volunteer-Dash.